I'm Sherman Morrison, Senior Wrangler at Creator Institute. And today I want to talk about writing the conclusion to a nonfiction book. When you think about it, the two most critical chapters in a nonfiction book are the introduction and the conclusion. Without a rock solid introduction, you may lose readers before they get to the meat of your book. And if the conclusion isn't rock solid, then you risk leaving the wrong impression and the book not having its intended impact. Now we've developed a couple of documents to help writers craft a conclusion to their nonfiction book. So let's take a look. In this document, writing a nonfiction book's conclusion, we walk you through a couple of different methods to structure a conclusion as well as the various elements that should be included. In terms of the methods, we suggest either working backward, where you begin with the most recent idea you presented in the book, and then move backward, highlighting the major themes all the way back to the first one, reiterating your big idea or theory, and ending with your call to action for the reader. But you could also choose working forward, where you begin the conclusion by revisiting the compelling hook or story from your introduction, then highlight the major themes throughout the content, again reiterating the big idea or theory, and once again ending with the call to action for readers. Now, there are many elements in a conclusion to a nonfiction book that do mirror the seven elements of an introduction. There's the hook. You want to cover the main themes and ideas that were in the book. Again, reiterate what that big theory or big idea was. Did it pan out? Were you surprised along the way? And then concluding with some kind of call to action. To help with that, you might revisit uh, what was written for, who is this for, why read it, the problem, and why you're writing this. Within those, you'll find the kernels of what you need to craft a really good call to action that will leave readers wanting to do uh, what it is you wish them to do after reading your book. The other piece that can be helpful is a checklist we've developed. So let's take a look at that. Here's the checklist for a nonfiction book conclusion. The first category of items has to do with the method or structure, whether choosing to work forward, choosing to work backward, or a writer may select a different method and structure, and it will be up to the developmental editor to help determine if what the writer wants to do is going to work for their conclusion. As with any chapter, you want to have a strong hook. This could be revisiting the hook from the introduction, or it could be touching on the last idea in the preceding chapter, or again, something different. If the developmental editor agrees, it could work. Then you recap a few of the introduction elements, the current view, the problem and why you wrote this and why you were writing this. Summarize the primary ideas, themes, points, takeaways of the different chapters in the book. Revisit the big idea or theory and then wrapping up with the call to action. So this checklist might be useful for writers to make sure they give the most solid structure possible to their conclusion. Both the checklist, as well as writing a nonfiction book's conclusion, are documents that can be shared with writers at their request or when it's time for them to start working on their conclusion. Thanks for watching and good luck with the conclusion to the nonfiction book.